So here's another punch biopsy for um, a patient with uh, diffuse patches and plaques on their buttocks and their trunk. They're an older, an older patient and they're um, an elderly patient that had these plaques or patches for many years and they were thought to be eczema, but they've been, you know, been treated with a lot of different uh, steroids and things and it's not really gotten any better. And what we can see here is that the, the deeper part of the dermis looks pretty much normal. And up here in the epidermis, <clears throat> Or, I mean, excuse me, in the superficial dermis, we have kind of uh, some small nodules of, of lymphocytes and also a thick layer of uh, fibrosis. And um, if, you, uh, if you look at my normal skin histology video, you can see what the normal papillary dermis should look like, but it shouldn't look like this. Here we have this thick, See how there's kind of like a wiry, I'll flip the condenser and see, look at how thick and wiry um, uh, these pink collagen bundles are here. These wiry pink collagen bundles. And they kind of look like little wires or like little noodles. Um, they've been compared to little noodles before, like fettuccine, I think, I believe it was Dr. Ackerman who said the fettuccine sign. Uh, is when you see these thick uh, collagen bundles. So this can be seen in, in, uh, in a variety of chronic things like chronic um, atopic dermatitis or chronic spongiotic dermatitis, but it always makes me think right away when I see that plus lymphocytes in the superficial dermis, I always think about mycosis fungoides, which is the most common form of cutaneous T-cell lymphoma. And this is, a, I think, a pretty straightforward, nice case of mycosis fungoides, which is uh, kind of rare to find because mycosis fungoides is often uh, subtle and difficult to diagnose, particularly in its early stages. But uh, so against my better judgment, I'm going to show a case here because I thought this one was a pretty good uh, classic example, but it can actually be pretty challenging to diagnose. So mycosis fungoides, what the, the most important thing that you have is you have T lymphocytes that are infiltrating the epidermis and or they're epidermotropic. They have a, a tendency to want to go into the epidermis. And what, you, what that looks like is these uh, T lymphocytes that are gonna be sprinkled along the basal layer. So they often have these kind of white, uh, pale, clear vacuoles around them. So we call that tagging. Uh, that's one way to, to say it is there's these tagging of lymphocytes along the basal layer with these little halos, the white halos around them. That's a really useful finding. Now remember, you can see little lymphocytes getting into the epidermis in a lot of inflammatory things like uh, vacuole or interface dermatitis in GVHD that I just showed. Um, you can see lymphocytes in the epidermis. But the big difference in mycosis fungoides is you usually have a lot of lymphocytes in the epidermis, but very little inflammatory changes. You don't usually have very many dying keratinocytes like you would have in an interface dermatitis. You do not usually have very much spongiosis. So there's a lot of lymphocytes in the epidermis, but actually relatively little uh, other change that you would see in, a, in an inflammatory process. So there's a lot of lymphocytes here but really not much spongiosis and not many dying keratinocytes. So these lymphocytes tagging along the basal layer with these little halos around them, that's, um, that's one feature. And look, you can see a lot of them here. And then they're beginning to kind of aggregate into little collections of two or three or more. And so those, this is a really small one, but those are called potrier microabscesses. And <clears throat> when the little lymphocytes make collections in the epidermis, usually the collections get a little bigger than that, but um, that's another feature of mycosis fungoides. So that epidermotropism is the useful feature. Sometimes mycosis fungoides has very small lymphocytes that do not look atypical. So you think, oh, it's a lymphoma, it should have cytologic atypia. And unfortunately, it doesn't always, and that's why early, especially early um, patch stage mycosis fungoides is quite challenging to diagnose, both clinically and microscopically, and it often requires multiple biopsies over time before you can finally confirm the diagnosis. But um, this is, I think, more like a plaque uh, uh, from the clinical. This is more plaque-like, and, and that it's been going on for some time, which you can tell because it's got all this um, kind of chronic fibrotic change in the papillary dermis. And the lymphocytes here are actually a little bit more on the atypical side. They're larger and hyperchromatic, and they're uh, kind of in between the individually elongated collagen bundles and they're tagging along the epidermis and they're beginning to make little collections and aggregates there in the epidermis. Here's another nice example. See, they're starting to aggregate here and make these little uh, potrier microabscesses. And then again, those little tagging with little halos around them. And you gotta be a little bit careful. You can see that these actually have more cytoplasm than most normal T cells would have. And I think that Langerhan cells, which will also make aggregates in the epidermis, they can really, I've seen um, uh, mycosis fungoides where 
where it, where it was really difficult to tell whether you had a Pottery microabscess or just a little collection of Langerhans cells like you would see in a spongiotic dermatitis like contact derm or something. So in that case, it's real easy. You can do CD3, a T cell marker, or you can do CD1A, um, which would be a Langerhans cell marker. You can do both of those to sort out which things are actually uh, lymphocytes and which things are or Langerhans cells if you're having trouble. And mycosis fungoides is something that should never be diagnosed just on the histologic features. You always have to make sure it fits clinically. There are tons of different um, inflammatory processes that can mimic mycosis fungoides histologically. And like I said, mycosis fungoides can also mimic inflammatory things. So it can go both ways. You can have things that, that are clearly mycosis fungoides but microscopically look like sponge derm or other, other inflammatory things or rashes. And then you can have things that look like this that look like great mycosis fungoides microscopically, but actually turn out to be a, a lymphomatoid drug eruption. Or I've seen epidermotropism like this over top of a tattoo reaction um, uh, in a lot of other settings too. So it's, it's a really challenging thing that I still, even after being in practice for five years now, I still find mycosis fungoides to be challenging sometimes. And I have to work really closely with my dermatology colleagues to see what the clinical looks like. Sometimes I'll say, well, I, I'm not sure if it's mycosis fungoides or not. I think we need to follow the patient up. And if it doesn't get better, do more biopsies over time. And that's obviously frustrating for the dermatologist. It's frustrating for the patients who don't understand why, why this can't just be diagnosed by looking at it. But it can be very challenging. I think this is a pretty clear-cut, straightforward case, and it fit with the clinical. But I think in many cases, it's challenging. And you can do immunostains sometimes, and you can also do um, T-cell receptor gene rearrangement to, to show that there's clonality. But both of those things can be problematic because the uh, more advanced forms of mycosis fungoides are usually easy to diagnose just on H&E. And when you do the immunostains on those, it usually shows beautifully that it's all CD4 positive, for example, and very little CD8, or, or it'll show loss of CD5 and CD7 or, or other things like that. None of those things are perfectly specific, of course. but. Um, but the problem is that the, the times where the immunostains work well are cases where you don't actually need the immunostains, where it's really straightforward. In the very subtle early cases, the immunostains are often not very helpful. And the T-cell receptor gene rearrangement, the same thing. The early cases that have very low cellularity, oftentimes the T-cell receptor rearrangement will, will fail and will show up as negative just because there are not enough lymphocytes to get good amplification and actually show whether there's a clonal rearrangement or not. So the problem is, is when you need those ancillary tests to help you, when you need them the most in those early subtle cases, they're the least likely to work, which is very frustrating, again, for us as a dermatopathologist. But this is a nice example of mycosis fungoides.